So you get to hear it tonight, <laughs> today I should say. Um, but it's great to be with all of you here. A very special day. Um, for those of you who maybe have seen the March issue of Parish Life, and for some of you who have not, you will soon, you'll read about a certain celebrity in our midst by the name of Frankie Straw, who will be celebrating 100 years young this month. She's had a very interesting life, graduating from college, marrying while serving during World War II, as well as working in the Armed Forces Security for the United States. A St. John's member for 41 years, she has served on the altar guild and often maintained the flowers around the sign in front of St. John's. Frankie is here with us practically every week and reminds us all of the restoring and sustaining nature of our faith. Now, let me just say Frankie would be the last one in the world who wanted me to share anything like that with all of you. But um, it's such a special month and such a special celebration. And you're such a special example uh, to us about, I believe, our faith and being faithful to that and the sustaining and restoring nature of our faith. Uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, Matthew 11, actually, 28 to 30, Jesus shares about how he can sustain us as well in our spiritual life. And he shares the following verses. Um, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, it's interesting as you look at those two very simple scriptures in Matthew's gospel as Jesus is teaching us about what it looks like to enter his rest, there is first and foremost an invitation to come to him, uh, that he is the source of our rest. And he invites us to do that. As we look at this scripture, he says in particular, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens. And that would basically encompass everybody who's a human being, I think, at one time in their life or another. Burdens of sin or sorrow, burdens of sickness, or maybe sometimes life can just be wearisome for us as well, and a burden too. Things that come up, struggles that we face, illnesses as well. At times, life can be full of burdens uh, that we have to carry. And my question for you and me here this afternoon is, what is it at this moment that wearies or burdens you right now? What in particular is it that you're carrying in your own heart that you'd like to see some relief from? Jesus' promise to those who are wearied or burdened is that he will give them rest. What a wonderful promise. You know, I'm so glad that Jesus didn't say to us in that scripture, I will give you more burdens. <laughs> I will make your life more miserable. I'm gonna make you drop to the ground and give me 20 more like the DI might have done in uh, uh, school growing up in the uh, enlistment school. No, Jesus says, for those of you who are burdened or wearied, I'm gonna give you rest. And I'm gonna give you exactly what you need. You know, it's interesting, as you look at that particular scripture in that phrase, I will give you rest, it actually communicates the idea of a commodity. It is, Jesus is basically saying to you and me, I will procure, procure you rest. I, I will be something like I can buy for you, something you might get at Best Buy or Costco. I'm gonna go, off the, go, on, go to the shelf that has rest, and I'm gonna get some for you. That's what the sense is that Jesus is talking about in this lesson today in the gospel. And so what Jesus is saying to you and me is that as you and I go to him in the midst of situations that for you and me are, are maybe wearying us, that are burdensome, that are a struggle for us, that he is our source of rest. It's more than the mattress that we lay our head on at night. It's more than maybe something that we take or that we drink. But Jesus is a source of rest that will restore us, refresh us, renew us and transform us unlike any other rest that anyone or anything else can give us. He goes on to say in this verse, going more into what this rest looks like, take my yoke upon me, upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart. And again, he repeats, and you will find rest for your souls. So he's saying, take my yoke upon you 
and learn from me. And I, one of my favorite parts of those, this verse, for I am humble and gentle in spirit. You know, again, as you and I go to the Lord in times where we need his rest and restoration in our lives, we will find someone who is humble. We will find someone who is gentle with us. We will find someone who is not saying to us, I can't believe you did that again. <laughs> Even though we deserve it. I can't believe you messed up in that way again for the hundredth time for 10 years now, right? Right? even though we may think of that. Humility, gentleness, welcoming, loving, forgiving. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. The yoke is that which is laid on the broad forehead or neck of an animal, actually, with cords attached to it and the burden that it's carrying. The yoke was form-fitted for the shoulders to prevent rubbing the flesh raw, which would have caused sores. So, you know, when you see those oxen out in the field, maybe you've seen it in person, maybe you've seen it on a movie, whatever, you may not have known this, but those yokes are actually form-fitted for that animal so that it wouldn't rub blisters on its shoulders. And what this scripture is saying to us today is that the yoke that the Lord would give us is form-fitted for us especially for us. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That word easy in the Greek comes from the word krestos, not cheerios, krestos, which means well-fitted. So what is the scripture saying to you and me? It says that the yoke that Jesus has for you is unique. It is a yoke that has been specifically created for you, not for me, not for the person in front of you or behind you, not for someone who you're thinking about who's, who you're saying, you know what, they would do much better with this burden than I would. No, this yoke has been specifically designed for you, nobody else. And I happen to believe that it's actually a dual yoke. It doesn't say this in scripture, but it's been my experience. Not only does my head fit in the yoke, not only does your head fit in your yoke, but there is another uh, part of the yoke for somebody else and that's where Jesus goes. Jesus, all along through our lives, is helping us to carry our yoke. We are never alone through the valley or going up the mountain, or going along a level plain. Jesus is with us every step of the way, helping us with every burden, if only we will let him. I believe there are many Christians, including you and me at certain seasons in our lives, that are carrying yokes that don't belong to us. We have our own yoke. We don't want Jesus' yoke. We have our own burdens. We have our own worries. We have our own things that we carry and that we keep to ourselves, maybe bad choices that we've never ever been able to forget or forgive ourselves for. Maybe we are in a place of rebellion where the Lord is calling us to do something or we feel like our life is moving in a certain direction, but we really don't want to go in that way. It might be a sin that we've been struggling with for a long time, or it might be just anxiety that keeps dogging us and seems to have us by the neck and won't let us go. And their burdens and their worries that we're carrying, their yokes and, and devices of our own making that God never gave to us. And so you might be angry at God. You might be saying, God, why am I carrying this? Why am I struggling with this? Why is this in my life? And if, if God were to speak back to you, I believe he would say to you, you know what? I never gave that burden to you. <laughs> it's not for me. You know, some of you are kind of like Charles Atlas. You're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders or you're carrying something else. Again, your guilt or your shame or your worry or you're feeling sad about yourself or sorry for yourself. And you know what? The Lord never gave that to you. He wants you to lift it up to him and let it go. And if there's something God wants you to do, guess what? He is more than able to let you know that. But you know, we love carrying these burdens 
We love having them on our shoulders. Poor me. Poor me. Uh, they'll feel bad for me. They'll, they'll, they'll kind of comfort me in some way. And, and Father Joe, I can't even begin to imagine what it would be like to let go of this burden because then what would I do? <laughs> How would I live my life? I've been carrying this burden my whole life. I've been carrying the world on my shoulders for so long. What would it look like for me to be free from that? Whew, this is nice to stand up. That's all I can say. <laughs> It'd be a lot easier. It'd be a lot lighter. It'd be a lot better. You'd begin to live the life that Jesus died and rose from the dead for for you. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Beloved of God, you and I need to get rid of the yoke, our yoke that we've been carrying for a long time. We need to get rid of it and receive the yoke that Jesus wants to give us. A burden that is easy, a yoke that is light. We need to exchange condemnation for forgiveness. We need to exchange fear for faith. We need to exchange anger and unforgiveness and hatred for love and mercy and grace. We need to make that exchange and begin to let those things go that we might begin to receive the yoke of Jesus that is easy, the burden that is light, that we might feel the joy and the the, the ease and the lightness of God and begin to have the smile on our face that comes from the depth of our heart that God has always wanted us to walk in. The joy of the Lord is your strength. But so many Christians are so burdened by, by things that they're carrying that they don't know what the joy of the Lord is. They're not happy. I've said this to you before and I'm gonna tell you again, I don't know how many people who aren't going to church and who know Christians say to me, you know what, I, I'm not gonna go to the church. I don't wanna be a part of that because I don't want ha what they have. When I look at them and, and how they're going through life, it seems like life is such a burden for them. They're as bad off as I am. I don't see any joy. I don't see any difference in their life. But there can be a difference for you and me. If we will receive the yoke that the Lord wants to give us and allow him to begin to minister his grace to us and his love to us and his strength to us. So how do you and I begin to do that very simply? Well, I believe the place it begins is simply going to Jesus in honesty today and saying to him, I surrender to your will and I give my yoke to you. I hope today, as you all leave this place today, that figuratively, there would be a sea of yokes in front of this altar, your yokes, all left at the altar. You don't need to take them back with you anymore. You don't need to carry them out of here and that you will receive the mantle of Jesus upon you, a mantle of love, a mantle of grace, a mantle of healing, a mantle of mercy. Jesus, I surrender to your will and your yoke for my life. Lead me, slow me down. Take all my burdens. You can have them all, especially that person or that thing. Would you please take them already? And then be open to change. Be open to a different way of living. Be open to an ease and a grace and a rest for your spirit such as you have never, ever experienced before. But Father Joe, it's too late for me. I've lived too long like this. This is who I am. No, doesn't have to be. You and I can change today by the grace and mercy of the Lord. So do you want that today? Do you want the yoke of Jesus, a yoke that is easy and a burden that is light? If you do, let us pray. And it's as simple as saying yes to that and receiving from him in faith.